Just right back, Charlie. Oh, 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 People deluded, I'm back again. Come on, Ian. <laughs>
I have, you've seen my tweets praising Kirill. One of my most view, viewed videos in recent weeks is actually a Kirill video. So I love that lad. He's doing exactly what I want. It's a bit like when Mikel Arteta. I think that so, no. like that is my least. When you know people, people were it? asking for Martinelli and Saliba to start and Arteta saying they weren't ready, that's because Arteta knew ball. Same way I know ball. There's certain things. I don't get excited with throw-ins and stuff. I want you to, I want a good player to be great. I see the promise, lad. I see things people don't see. That, you know, That's it is what it is. I wanted to ask you on Smith Rowe as well, because you kind of alluded to it rightly so, banter aside. Do you think the pennies dropped in the sense of we can't get too many conclusions based on the minutes he played? But for me personally, yeah, he was involved in the two goals, like you said, but he looked, he, he was pressing, there was intensity in everything he was doing. I was more impressed with, as you said, you know, when he when he closed that man down and won the yeah. ball back. Do you think all the other aspects in terms of intensity has finally dropped with Emil? Because he looked good, even with the third man runs from midfield. Um, I, I I do feel like we've seen that since like the season has started. He just hasn't gotten like enough minutes. Like every time that he's played, like when he played against uh, Brentford in the cup, when he played against Sheffield at home, when he played against Nottingham Forest away, he did have those intense moments. He was getting into midfield and dropping deep and doing what he needed to do. It's just about getting more minutes and putting those together. And then I also think underlining them with goals and assists as much as like I want to sit here and be like it's not all about that, I feel like players on the fringes, you kind of have to to almost like legitimize the performance in a way. So he got that, and I feel like that's why people are talking about the performance more. But this is not the first time that we've seen Emil this season being more physical, being more alert defensively. He's done it before. And I think like Diallo is saying it, like he was gassed after like 60 minutes, which naturally, makes yeah. He hasn't played, uh, but I think it's a good thing that Arteta left him out there because I feel like that's the only way that you can get your fitness up is if you kind of like keep going after you're like fully done. So it was, it was, I thought the stocks went up for Emil in that game a lot because it's like, um, we don't have a lot of players beyond like Tommy and Trossard and Jorginho that I think are like trusted off of the bench. And we, we're kind of limited in what we can do up front, um, especially like in attacking positions. Emil at least offered a glimpse of somebody that you can be like, okay, if we need to do something different, we can trust him. And I know it's just Luton, a weak Luton, but again, this is not the first time that we've seen it. He just actually underlined it with some sort of like assist or, you know, we saw it for real, you know? So yeah, I think it was a good day out for him for real. What do you think this is the most important time for the whole squad? Because Arteta made a big emphasis on, you know, we need our players to be fit. A few months ago, he said, when you get to March, April, May, you want everybody fit. Obviously, it was yeah. a heavily rotated side. Do you think, you know, the players are doing doing what they need to do in that regards and giving the manager faith for those that played? Yes and no. I, I feel like it just depends on what they know behind the scenes. Like, I do feel like, you know, like Emil's performance was good. I thought Partey's performance in the first half was good. Well, we're gonna I, get thought, to. I thought Reese Nelson was all right. And I thought Zinchenko was all right. You know, so it all depends on what they feel like. Okay, like maybe Zinchenko's just not up to his fitness. But I feel like some players are stepping in and, and showing that they can be counted on. And others are still leaving questions, I think, from the outside looking in. Now, because Arteta, I know he trusts Zinchenko. But when I'm watching him, sometimes it's like a heart. It's like my heart is like oh my gosh, can you please just like not give the ball away? So it's a tough one. What did you think? Like, well, In relation to Zinchenko, I can't lie. I think you're being harsh. I think a lot, not just you. I think a lot of yeah. people are being harsh to Zinchenko. I think he did give the ball away a couple of times. Personally, watching the game twice, I actually think he was one of our more positive performers. I wouldn't have started him. I understand why he started. You know, as you said, the depleted loot inside. We're going to have the majority of possession and, and and stuff like that. But I would have liked to see Tommy Asu in the same way Partey got significant minutes. I wanted that with Tommy Asu because, you know, take nothing away from Kiri where he's been quite great. But we've got the Brightons. We've got, you know, however many tough games. I want to get those key players up to speed. I thought Zinchenko was good. I think Partey looked good in that lone six. I think people are harping on about him literally losing the ball two, three times. But I think he played some great midfield lines splitting passes and it's nice to see him having a positive performance on top of the City game. Uh, who else is there? I think I don't know about you. Let me know how you feel. I think 
obviously Nelson's involved for the second goal. I don't think Nelson was terrible, but I think he, I, I don't want to say he's play, played it too safe because you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't, because you know you're not a key member of the side. This could potentially be your only start in what's left of the season. And yeah. I, but for me, I'd say Nelson out of, the, out of the squad players, I don't really feel offered nothing. I think he played too safe and playing a bit standard, really. You know, you've got Same. to find that balance of doing what Arteta wants, being safe, but also standing out because there's not going to be too many times Saka's not involved. But yeah, what did you make in Nelson's performance? I just thought it was just like, okay, like, you know? And I feel like it just highlights our, like, lack of depth in the wing areas, like, in terms of being able to replicate what Saka and Martinelli give us. Because um, Trossard offers something completely different, which sometimes what he offers is, like, not what we need. Like, sometimes we need that pace, you know, and that intensity, and he sometimes he doesn't offer it, whatever. So, yeah, but I thought Reese was... Maybe he did play it too safe, but maybe we're asking a lot of a player that maybe just doesn't have the ability to do it. I feel like Arteta hasn't given him a lot of minutes. I think we gave him the new contract. He hasn't been played in moments where maybe Saka's leg was almost about to fall off. So I feel like it's tough to be like, yeah, but I expected Nelson to like, what did you expect him to do? Like, I would say I just, for me take on some players a bit more because he's got that in his locker. I mean, does he still got that in his locker? I mean, yeah, you're an Arsenal, you're an Arsenal winger, you're a Premier League midfielder. I mean, winger. So I, I still think you've got that. You've, you've definitely come off the bench before in this season and looked a lot more positive. Maybe mm. it's just one of those things, as you said. You know, it's, 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 and I do think fans fail to remember like it is difficult asking these players to do a madness when they haven't had minutes in the legs. And probably, as you saw in the second half, even with Smith Rowe, the players that don't really get minutes, they kind of looked probably a bit too tired. But I think Nelson's got it in his locker. Personally, I prefer him on the left-hand side. I just think mm. there's more variety in what he can do. I think he's extremely predictable on the right. Would you, you know, Reese Nelson's been linked with 30 million bids from Brighton. Are you doing that? Absolutely. I have a duty to ask. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing it as well, to be honest. I love Nelson, but like, 30 million serious. quid. And not even, Nelson? not even just 30, like 15. Like it's profit. Like be serious. I, I'm gonna disagree for the benefit of this video, but I agree. What so do you I mean for the that. benefit? Because I, I, I it's he's okay to lens, agree. Man. He's hey lens, man. I no, I, I feel so scummy agreeing with you saying 15 million for Reese yes, Nelson, but I wholeheartedly scummy. agree with it. Like now I'm scum. Even that for me, it's a thing. It's a thing where clearly Nelson was given that contract because Arteta likes him. There's a role in the squad for him. There's obviously resale value, and he's a hey lender. But it was main. I think it was because we failed to bring in a winger or was unable to bring in a winger in the summer. You kind of alluded to it, yeah, in that where you said with Trossard, who I actually feel had a decent game, take nothing away from him. But we're yeah. speaking about Nelson. We're speaking about Trossard. Do you think we're missing that kind of blistering pace away from Saka and Martinelli? Because when you look at when we haven't brought in Rafinha, Pedro Neto, uh, Mudrik, it has seemed like Mikel Arteta has gone for that profile. And I personally feel in the summer it's a thing where Arteta, he's obviously signed Gabriel Jesus for 45 million, but it feels mm -hmm. like now's the time for him to probably be a bit more luxurious with spending on, on that area of the pitch. But what do you make of that? Absolutely. Um, I don't think I, I saw it before. And people have been mentioning it for a lot longer. But mm. now I'm like, oh, yeah, like we actually don't have that much pace. Like we genuinely don't. Um, as Like I feel like Saka is more quick than like super pacey. And then like Martinelli is like our only like real pace up front. So I would imagine whoever we bring in, whether it's the winger or the striker, needs to have some ability to stretch defense. Um, I agree. And sometimes you just need someone that can just create a bit of chaos. And I feel like we're a little controlled in attack a lot. So sometimes just throwing a little bit of pace out there, like that's probably like one of the reasons why I, besides the fact that I hate them playing Man United sucks because it's like, you just know that there's at least like there's two or three players that they have that can just strike fear because they're so fast, you know? And I just don't feel like we have that. You know, so even just one player that can do that, plus Martinelli, I think would help. You know, um, I just don't know who that player is because, like, sometimes I think I have a hard time di differentiating between like pace and like just quickness. Sometimes I don't like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if Nico Williams is actually, is he, is he fast or is he just tricky on the ball? You know, so a bit of both. I think fans are overrating him slightly and. 
please, no one in the chat misunderstand what I'm saying. I think Nico Williams is great. I just feel whether it's Zuba Mendy, Nico Williams, Goya Kerez, Ivan Tony. once upon a time, when Arsenal are consistently linked with one player, they're seen as the messiah, like they can turn water to wine and they're, you know, Lionel Messi essentially, and he's not that. But I do think we need pace, even if, if it's a plan B. And it'd be interesting to see what Arsenal do with the Hay Lenders, because we can't sell all of them because we need to register some, but... If there is 30 million shouts for Reese Nelson, if there is 35 million for Eddie and Ketty and 45 million for Smith Rowe, who's got two years left on his deal, there's serious decisions to be made. This comment is interesting from Aaron, and I wanted to get your thoughts. I've got my own thoughts. He has said Nelson has no confidence because of previous managers and not even minutes. For you, how far does that go? Because at the end of the day, I hear that and I understand that. But this is a job. This is professional football. The collective comes first. It's be useful, be useless. But what's your thoughts on that? Come on now, y'all. Come on now, y'all. We're we're better than this. We're better than this. Come on now. Like, he's okay. Like, I, I get that if you want to take all the onus away from Reese Nelson, but have we forgotten that Reese Nelson has went a long period, like long periods of time not even being available to play, whether that's for Arsenal or whatever loans he's been on because he just hasn't been fit enough. He really struggled, like, at the beginning of his time in the Netherlands. He went to Germany when he, like, you guys, remember, like, Reese Nelson, it's crazy that he's only 24. It feels like he's been around for a decade because he damn near has been. Probably has, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, we're not, it's, this is not somebody that we do not know. He sometimes lacks the fitness. And then I don't know what happened. There's like a period of time where it was like, does he want it bad enough? Like, and it's hard to see that, but it's just, I don't know if it's, you know, managers not giving him minutes. I feel like, I don't know with Reese, maybe this might be harsh, but like, I just feel like we've gotten to a place with Reese where we realize what his level is and it's not where we're at right now. And it's just that simple. Am I being too harsh? No, I don't think you're too harsh. I think Nelson's one of those where if he left and went to another club, he'd show his quality and we might think what could have been. But sometimes that needs to happen. And my heart bleeds for him. Obviously, I'm a Wenger baby. You know, I want to put an arm around him and show him nothing but TLC. Yeah. But at the end of the day, this is a job. We're a better football club now. It's be useful or be useless. You need to try and take Saka's place or Martinelli's. You need to do a bit more. And in relation to that comment about not having confidence because of previous managers, at some point, you've got to take responsibility. You know, you've had yeah. Wenger, you've had Emery, you've had um, Arteta, sorry. And like Jesse said, at some point, like you're still kind of in the same place. So it's your fault. Everything in life is your fault. And as Jess expertly said, they're injuries. You know, he doesn't get lengthy injuries, but he gets the two weeks or three weeks. And ultimately, that makes it unable for you to break in. And I also feel with Nelson, I like the fact of he wants to stay at Arsenal. He believes he can offer something here. But yeah. maybe you have to be realistic with yourself and say, you know, I'm not getting ahead of Trossard. I'm not getting ahead of Gabriel Jesus if he plays out there. Saka or Martinelli. How yeah. far does that really go? For me, it doesn't. We're at that point now where, fair enough, if he was like a young Ethan, 17, 18, I could, I could cut them excuses. But you've been on the block already. You was about before Bukayo Saka. Now, everyone's tra trajectory is different, but it doesn't go far really and I, and I actually think there's a player in Nelson but I don't feel his decision making has necessarily improved that much I don't feel his consistency has gone up to the level it has so at this point you're in the halfway house and if there is offers in line with our rebuild things have to be done have you seen mm -hmm. Thomas Partey's recent comments I did see the comments about like um I have like a year left um but I need to be available. Like that's like the most important thing about staying beyond. I think um, that's all I really saw. Is this more of it? Yeah, I mean, in you know, because no one else is. I don't know if anyone else has seen it. I'll just read it out quickly. Yeah. Thomas Partey insists he's really happy at Arsenal after being linked with a move away from the club. As you all know, he's in the last eighteen months of his deal. He's been linked with Juventus and clubs in Saudi. The man himself said, "My head is always here. This is where I choose to play. I'm really happy every time I'm on the field. I know there. I know a lot of speculations have been going on, but for me, I'm really happy to be here and continue playing for this football club. I'm really good. It's been." a while i've been trying to work a lot on my fitness i've been through a lot of work i've done all i can and i'm really happy to be back and i feel really good i think everybody is working hard we have great players here Jorginho, declan rice is there and el nene as well and we have a lot of players in that position i think it's good to have everybody ready this time of the season and from the beginning when i tried everything i can be available at the moment i feel good today i feel very good on the field and i think i've improved a lot on my fitness i'm trying my best to keep on going at this level and keep giving my best so now yeah what do you make of that um <laughs> okay 
So if I want to be an asshole, which I kind of do for like just a second. Let us know your thoughts. You can do yeah, whatever, like, you want, be whatever you want. Like, why would he want to go? He's in London. He's on like insane money, right? He's on like 200 and something thousand pounds per week. He's in London, enjoying life, just had a baby, whatever. And he'll have like one year left on his deal and then he'll be able to leave on a free. You know, at some point he's under like no duress, like under no pressure to move Even on. Even rumors of Arsenal. a new deal at Arsenal as well. Yeah. So that aside, um, I feel like there's how I feel about Partey and how Mikel feels about Partey. And they can always be completely different. I'm just looking from the outside. Now, personally, I'm tired. Like I'm exhausted. I'm done. Like I just, I like him. I think he's a great player. Like when he's fit which is always the thing when he's fit, he's great. Same old story. He's not fit enough, enough, you know? So it, it is what it is, you know? So I would prefer him to be moved on in the summer. Now, Mikel loves a second, third, fourth chance. So if he's really working on his fitness and, you know, Partey really is happy to be there, there is a chance that he'll stay. You know, I think there's Jorginho and Partey and we don't need both, but one of them is going to probably go. And the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm like, all right, so what's the chances of Partey having like, remember we said, is there going to be a market for Partey? Genuinely. And if there's no market for him, there's probably a bigger market for a free Jorginho than Partey with a year left. So it's, there's a chance that he could stay. Listen, from now to the end of the season, I just need to see you actually like available for games, bro. That's it. You know, that's all I need to see. We could talk about more of that in the summer when we get there. But, um, you know, from what he did yesterday, you can tell that there's quality there. Like I've always said, like, I think he's he has like special talents that like other people can't do. But my goodness, stay fit, stay fit, you know, and that's just what it is. What are your thoughts on it? I mean, Jess, you said it there. There's not much more I can add on to it. You know, if we're just talking about the man's ability and his experience and, you know, we've got a youth project and the experience, then. For me, Thomas Partey is a key player. The issue with Partey is we've watched this movie before. How much times are we going to watch this same movie and hope for a new ending? Which I do hope is the case. When fit, what with the greatest of respect to what I've seen from Jorginho, who's done well, and everybody else, even Smith Rowe, I would love to see Thomas Partey, Declan Rice and Martin Odegaard on a consistent basis. I think that trio's got everything. I wonder if, and it's like what you said there, you know, it kind of takes me back to last summer where... The club are open to moving on Partey, but because of his contract, his wages, wages and willingness to move on, will he actually be chomping at the bit to move on or does he want to run down his contract? The biggest thing for me is, you know, everything's on the table. Again, clearly the club want to keep Jorginho and I think Jorginho is open to staying for reasons that you've kind of said with Partey, but his career is winding down. He might want to go back to Brazil or go to Italy or get some money from Saudi or might not want to necessarily sign a new deal at Arsenal outright, might just want to take out another extension. My thing is you know I think I know it's not a thing but if both of them stay like I said last summer I would like two central midfielders I need one as a minimum I do think with Jorginho and Partey potentially staying I am keen to see what that would mean for our midfield whether that's Douglas Luiz, Ubermendi, Onana and all of these players I would love Partey to be fit you know me and you have spoken about it before when you look yeah. at our squad how many players can you bet on are going to be fit for about 30 games? Now, injuries can happen to everybody, but I would say Declan Rice, Odegaard, Bakayo Saka, what, Kai Havertz, Saliba, Gabriel, Benjamin White, obviously the goalies. And there's probably a couple of it. I'll give Timber the grace because he had a mad injury. But the vast majority of our squad, they pick up injuries. And I think the best trait you could have as a footballer is being available. If we want to be a team that's in the dynamics that we are right now, just like, fighting for the Champions League, fighting for the Prem. I'm pretty sure every Arsenal fan here would love to still be in the league in FA Cup. We need players available because we've done a great job, but we've been dealing with injuries since August. I'm yeah. not sure though, man. I like I'm that excited. because it says he wants to stay, but I, like yeah. you said, I'm tired, man. I'm yeah, tired. it just is like it, Arsenal have to make a decision based on like, you know, there's there's so many different factors beyond just like how we personally feel about the players. So, and I understand that. Um, but also... I'm thinking whether it's Jorginho or Partey, I just really just need Arsenal to go out there and get a, a good, like very, very, very good midfielder that's going to start with Rice and, and Odegaard because that's what they genuinely need. The two of them for the majority of the season, I feel like have done double shifts um, because we didn't have the right Fact. balance going on in midfield. And so 
whether, you know, like I said, it's Partey or Jorginho and they'll make that decision. I still need like a massive midfielder signing to come in. Somebody who's going to be available just like Rice and Odegaard. And I then I feel Joe like, partner. yeah. And then who, whoever stays between Jorginho and Partey becomes less important, but I think it's, it's becoming, it's a bigger conversation than it, it should be because whatever we did in the summer did not really solidify the midfield the way that it should have because genuinely our whole problem and what we'll probably look back on at the end of the season if we don't win anything is how long it took us to get the midfield balance right because things just were too chaotic so we can't do that again we need to just go out there and buy a midfielder and then we won't I don't think we'll care as much whether it's Partey or Jorginho that's you know? the thing. That's the thing. Like you kind of said, I love Thomas Partey, but I, I always think what would life would have looked like if we never had Declan Rice? Because we'd be even more in even more trouble. Mm -hmm. I do would yeah. like to see our midfield address because whatever anyone has to say about Kirill Zinchenko and everyone defensively, we've got some good options there. We've got some good options in the final third. The midfield is where Declan Rice is the only one that you know is going to be here for a number of years, can play as a six or an eight, and is in line with the long-term vision. Jorginho, a great player, but he's just, like, I, cl I class him as, like, a teacher. He's here for a couple of years, and he's doing great, passing on his knowledge to the players. Thomas Partey, the same. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult one, man, because you could argue and spin it and say, in Thomas Partey's defence, letting him go... Are we going to bring in someone of that quality for for an affordable fee? Like, who really is there? To me, as an honest fan, I'm not saying that to keep him. I'm just simply being devil's advocate. For me, if I could do it, Douglas Louise or Zuba Mendy or both amongst others would be at the football club. But it's a techie one. And it all depends on what our club is trying to do. I do think we've got a plan in the market, what we want to do in the summer. But it's all, a, it, I guess it's all reliant on moving parts. Players that we thought were going to leave might not leave. Players that we thought were available might not be available. So we're just, it's like what Arteta used to say in, in the in the last two Januaries. We just have to be ready to adapt in any situation. But it yeah. will be an interesting one. And, and I also feel with Jorginho and Partey, I think over experience can be overrated, but it can't be overstated. And I think as much as we've learned on the, we've been learning on the job, everybody involved. I do think when I look at that Porto game and I look at them sort of scenarios, especially in Europe, that's where I would like to really over leverage the Havartzes, the Jorginho's, the Thomas Partey's. I know it's the Conference League, but to a degree, Declan Rice, those we've experienced in there, because even if we look at the two games against, against Porto, I think even Saliba and Saka and all of these players, it looked like, oh, this is a bit of uncharted waters, really. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not sure. Yeah, for sure. I think idealistically you want one old head in the midfield you know in it to to be able to bring on or you know pass on knowledge or whatever and so we have two options arsenal have to figure it out but next season the all i want to be able to say is that cuz right now rice is our better like pretty much our best eight and our best six yeah next season i do i want to hear rice is our best six but blank is our bet best eight. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. I'm Whoever, you, who's blank? Who's blank? I need blank. And so that's the thing, blank. man. Like, oh, it has to get that because I don't know how you feel, but it's like for me, as much as we're ticking on an upward trajectory, I don't feel we're really going to get to our full potential defensively or offensively until that midfield is addressed. There's been games where I thought, oh, if we can have that number eight that makes runs or, you know, yeah. can control a tempo of a game, we're going up a level. And you might unlock the new look Declan Rice, who is learning this kind of new Arsenal role. So it's, the, it's, it's interesting. Would you make it this question? DG does just want an eight or a six to partner Rice. Yeah, I think... Um... Rice being our best number eight has given people a little bit maybe of like a false vision of like what he should be doing. I genuinely feel like he's our six, you guys. And I just feel like we need to leave him in the six role and let him cook there. Um, and then Odegaard is our more creative option and then bring in a number eight. That's what I would do um, to partner Rice. Now you could do it the other way, but I feel like it's just it's kind of like stalling the natural thing that's going to happen anyway. And I'd rather Rice spend more time perfecting the six role than spending time in the eight role just to go back there in a couple of years. So bring us a six or sorry, bring us an eight. But that person also could play with Partey or Jorginho. That person can play instead of Rice. Like idealistically, I'd want it to be somebody that's not more defensively minded, but not so much like a number 10. Um, you're putting up Bruno Gomorrah. He's kind of the template for it. He's but we, we, missed, we missed, we fucking missed the, I think we missed it. Like, Came I think for quite we missed a it. Serious missing out. City yeah. would have been lovely at Arsenal. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know why we didn't do it. 
I, I genuinely don't. When you find but, out, let me know. Yeah, it's just like a midfield of Bruno Gamarais, Rice, and Odegaard would be perfect. That's the balance that I would look for. And then like a less good version of that would probably be Douglas Louise. Another version of that would probably be Frankie de Jong. Something like that. That's what I think would be right. I'm I don't I don't think we're getting him though. Like I don't think we can get him. I've played. I don't know how much my yeah. man's gonna cost, but I'd say anything from 70 all the way to 100 million. I think there's admiration for this player, but I don't know if we're gonna go and do it. If it's up to me, Bruno Gomorrah is a player we like. He's a scumbag, he's a brute, he's obviously got wonderful technical <laughs> level. No, he's a scumbag. He, he proper is a scumbag. <laughs> I, like he, we see it all the time. He's a proper scumbag. Yeah. We've we've yeah. got scumbags in our team. Nice guys finish last, really. You know, to all the young boys out there, you know, that in relationships, girls don't like good guys, so you know what I'm on about, but <laughs> Like, I'm having Bruno Gomares, but I just don't see it happening. I wanted to go back to what you said there, yeah, because you kind of said two things. You don't think Declan Rice, I'm, I'm not saying you think this, but you said master the six. You don't think he's mastered the six? And I wanted to ask a question, like, do you think me, you and everyone, were kind of getting hung up on eights and sixes? It's more of a, according to what Arteta wants, because Rice yeah. has been doing a bit of both. Yeah, so um, the has he mastered the six? No, I don't think so. And I think if you asked him, he would say the same. I feel like there's still room to grow. I think that's why you buy a Declan Rice is because since he's come to Arsenal, I feel like he's gotten better. I do. 100%. Because, he, because he's learning, you know, um, and there's still more to come. He's he's what, 25? Just imagine when he's like 27, 28, 29, how good he's going to be. So has he mastered it? No. And I think part of that is also switching positions so often and like having to do different things, which is fine because um, it's worked for us in terms of getting hung up on six and eight. I do think it's like what I'm trying. I want to focus on more is what is going to be the best person to balance what we have and what we don't have. So like with Odegaard, one of the things that I feel like people are asking more of him that doesn't really suit his skill set is like, oh, well, he's not physical enough. You know, he runs around, but he's not physical well. enough. And I'm like, yeah, but that's probably what he doesn't have. But can we add somebody in on the other side that makes that less of a, a problem? Because really, Odegaard yeah. is, is playing so many different positions. If he could just focus more on attacking, maybe we don't need that. You know, Rice, he doesn't he doesn't have that ability to thread the through ball. He doesn't have that creativity in his passing. Okay, well, he has like a million other things that he's really good at. Who can we bring in that can take that? And make that not something that we focus on from Rice's perspective, right? So I'm thinking, how do we balance the midfield more than six or eight or whatever? Do I think that player is more of a, a, a of a eight than a ten? Yeah. Do I think that they probably are more defensive minded or can play more defensive? Yes, I do. Um, but some people feel like it's just go get out, go get Musiala. You know, so we all think about easier it said than done, but would love yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. So, but he's the template. Bruno Grimmerich, but I just feel like we kind of just like we're so stupid and like <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever recover. Um, he is an ass, but if he's you on your team, you probably love you him. You love him, yeah, you love him. So I think I think you're bang on. I think you're bang on the money with midfield. I think with Declan Rice, I think he has mastered the six role because that's all he's been playing. But I do think in relation to what Arteta is demanding, you've scratched it. You're not even scratching the surface. I've been saying it. I think a year from now, well, a year from the season starting, that's when, in my opinion, a year on is when you will really see a new look Declan Rice. But kind of going back to what you said, we can't write, rewrite history. Can Declan Rice learn to thread those passes a bit more and all of that stuff? Great. But that's not him. And not to disrespect him, but he is he's a piano push to a piano player in midfield nine times out of ten for England you're the brute in the midfield next to Jude Bellingham now if you can bring in the same way Jude Bellingham's got to do dirty work you've got to do a bit of nice stuff on the ball but that's you you're never we're never going to wake up and Declan Rice is going to be a Jorginho type that's I not feel that way set. too Exactly. Yeah. Like it's just sometimes you just have to accept football for what they are. Like I hate praising him because he's racist, but John Terry, he struggled with high lines. Jose Mourinho found the system that enhanced what he's good at and you know mitigates against what he's terrible at. And that's what you need to do. Um, so it'd be interesting, it'd be very interesting to see what we do. But I do think a midfielder, like I think every Arsenal fan would like a striker, like a winger, like a central midfielder or two. Obviously, we need a goalie, probably another defensive option. And I'm I might be being a bit dishonest. But I think if you ask me, you could only have a winger, a striker or a central midfielder. I know goals win games and stuff like that. 
But I'm probably going to say central midfield person. I was just about to ask you that. Like, if you I say centre midfield. Used... Okay, yeah. yeah. Would you make a Kimmich? Because we've been linked with him again. Bring. I, I just, I feel like Premier League fans can be just a little bit Sneaky. arrogant when it comes to like, yeah, but he plays in the Bundesliga and, and Bayern aren't playing well right now. We are going to see in a couple of, like, soon that Bayern are not like this shit team. Like, they're just, they have quality players. They have some problems. But Kimmich, bring experience, can play multiple positions. He's he has that dog. He has all the things. Like you, know? you said, it's, it'd be stupid not to like if there's an op listen again, wages, all of that stuff. Oh, of gosh, course, no word, of course. Sorry. Um, wages, all of that stuff. I can't talk about all of that, but I don't really care. I'm not an accountant. On in terms of quality and what you can bring and experience, he's 29. Yeah. I know people look at that and say, Oh, he's 29, he's this, that, and the other. His game, obviously, physically, with the, the margins getting bigger and bigger, it could affect you, but it's not like his game is reliant on strength or, or, or pace or anything like that. It's all upstairs. I'm bringing him if, if, if he's able to do it. I doubt it though, because you know, we're gonna have to see who the next Bayern Munich manager is. I think the bulk of these rumors, not just to Arsenal but elsewhere, is because of his contractual situation. Do I think yeah. there's admiration for? The guy within Arsenal and City and PSG and all these teams that are linked with him 100%. Do I think we've got a good project to convince him 100% as well? Real Madrid have been linked with him. I don't know if he'll go there, but he's got a decision to make. Would you make it, Isaac? Apparently, we've joined Spurs in the race to sign him. Now, I'm not asking you between Spurs and Arsenal which one he's going to pick. It's self-explanatory, but yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> it's like, it's just so funny because like... Fair enough, Spurs. As much as people... Everybody knows me as the injury uh, injury person. Like I'm just so afraid of injured uh, injured players that I'm just like, oh, but is he injured a lot? And um, you know, looking at it, it's like, okay, you could make an argument that like maybe it's just Newcastle's medical team, or you know, he's not really injury prone. It's this whatever. It's putting that aside, he ticks so many of the boxes. Like idealistically, that's probably the type of striker that you'd want to bring to Arsenal because it he. He's the Premier League proven, you know, um, he's the right age. He's played with Odegaard before he scores. I mean, for people, I, I, I was talking to like somebody was like, oh, he's a penalty merchant. Not only is he not a penalty merchant, but he's knocking on 20 goals this season. What's wrong with scoring this... pens as well? I've always hated. I've always hated that. Like, even though I'm not a big fan yeah. of Ivan Tony necessarily. He's like, oh, he's only done this. Bro, it's very difficult to even score a penalty. But go on, I cut you off. I, I've always yeah. found it jarring. Yeah, it's just like, OK, not only is that not true, but he's he's missed like 10 games this season and he has 15 goals by the time we get to the end of the season he most likely will have 20 goals he will he will most likely have 20 goals so i mean we're talking about needing a 20 goal season striker technically he might he might just be that he has 15 goals right now so he's um he looks the business he matches the eye test all these things right it's just a matter of whether or not he's going to be available, you know, and he did, you know, come out and make some statement about he's there for the Newcastle project. I don't really be listening to players like that. Because I'm just like, different. yeah, like, what are you about to say? Like, yeah. you know, what are you about to say? He's so, not do a Tony. Yeah, exactly. So I would say sell Ramsdale to Newcastle and take Isak and just call it a day. And I'll take Amaris just, first, but I'm with you with the executing. Yeah. So it's, it's one of those. I do like, Jokeris, you know, everybody knows I like him as well, but they're so different. Isak mo more satisfies the nostalgic of Henri feel like he's satisfying that. Where Jokeris Eddie is would have to take off that 14, man. Yeah. So, I mean, should he have had it to begin with? Let's be serious. I, so, I'm not involved. I'm not involved. Big up Eddie. Hey, no, Lendo, but wait. Let's be serious. <laughs> so, but yeah, like, first of all, Tottenham, you have no chance. But Arsenal, if you're going to bring in a striker, he'd probably be the most, the one that most Arsenal fans, I think, would be like, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, he, I wanted to ask as well, yeah, because he's kind of gone quiet on the awesome in front, but is that called awesome in feet? Um, Because awesome ain't got his injury records a bit spooky as well, to be fair. It's so, it's so like, it just is so Arsenal, Isak, Chelsea, awesome. Doesn't it just, it just feels like stars. that makes so much more sense, doesn't it? Um, it's written in the stars, 100%. Yeah, so I feel like I like Osaman, and of course, like, I wouldn't 
I wouldn't turn it down. You know, I'd be like, op, like, yeah, I think he's great. But yeah, I probably would go with Isak just because he just feels more like an Arsenal player, if that makes sense. I don't know, Jess, man. I'm I'm conflicted because I agree with that point you just made about is that looks more like a like an Arsenal player. Yeah. I've watched Arsenal men a lot, but obviously I'm watching Premier League a lot more than Serie A. So it's almost it's not I'm not calling them devils, but it's like the devil you know. And I just think I just think for Isaac, he's like I do like Osman's hold up play in general play, but it just feels like Isaac is involved a lot more. And I know Osman does this, but I'm a big fan of when Isaac pulls over to the left hand channel. I think Isaac kind of suits us a bit more, but I think all in all, I'd probably gamble on Osman. I think Osman might be a bit more attainable purely because of the release clause. You know, some people even do say Osman will flop in the Premier League. I'm not sure on that because I know he's made his name in Italy and he hasn't set the world alight everywhere, but he's played in Germany, he's played in Italy, he's played in France. So he is fairly adaptable to playing in other countries and whatnot. Jokeres yeah. speaks for himself, you know, since I've educated myself on him. I don't know if any of these strikers are the answers, but I do think he fits what Mikel Arteta wants, especially when you look at the pressing metrics and all of those things, which I think all the three strikers we've just discussed kind of have. So it's going to it's gonna be, an, it's literally going to be an interesting one in, in that regard. What did you make of the situation game and what did you make of the comments you know are you part of the bus or not you know da, 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 da. i mean whatever like who actually cares it's it's like okay well anytime that we go to any big ground and get swept or even lose even marginally it's you're so naive why did you do this why you play your game you. you know you need to be able to play a different way and then arteta shows that we can play a different way and then all of a sudden, yeah, but you didn't, you didn't play your way. You didn't play your start you moving like that. Yeah, and, and one thing about Arsenal that, and this is this is what really irritates me is that I don't think people are honest about Arsenal. And I actually, you either are dishonest about Arsenal, you don't watch us. Because one thing about Mikel well, is he's going to make sure that we have different ways to play and different ways to win games and and, and to get defense. points. Exactly. And so, yeah, like for the last three months, we've played the best like football in the league, but we will park a stinky bus at your spot and and get the clean sheet absolutely exactly. we will and and that's the most important thing because in the past we've been so stupid and like gone places and just incredibly like, naive just, yeah and like now that we're not doing that people are like yeah but i liked you more when you you know played good football and you got swept up like okay well does entertainment win trophies That's look over. at Spurs at the moment look at yeah. look at leeds last season when they got relegated they were entertaining Luton are fairly entertaining to watch play football they'd given everyone a game yeah. but you're going to stay in the league and it annoys me because people sit there like you said arteta hasn't got a plan b he shows a plan b he shows that you know even you look at city against liverpool the other week there was a time where city actually looked like they were little kids against liverpool but they defended well and left with something that's what we got to be able to do and like you said there we've got all of these great defensive metrics you know defensive set pieces winning the ball back individually and collectively we're seeing I don't think they're going to get Arsenal player of the month or of the season better yet but you see what Saliba Benjamin White Gabriel in particular are doing and Declan Rice and then you're shocked that we can defend now I can't speak for everybody and I'm not saying that's it, it means anything but as we're on this trajectory as much as I want us to play sexy and exciting football I have liked that we're a lot more street smart this season and it gives me a lot more confidence for going to buy Munich away or Real Madrid not just this season but beyond in games where we're going to have to be spot on without the ball and when I say defence I have to say as well for the striker and I have asked everybody really, so it jars me. But yeah, we just have to get used to being hated. We're Arsenal Football Club, goalposts are always gonna move, man. One other one other thing, too, is like the only thing that irked me about that game was that it would have been the it like it would have been even better because I thought it, it worked out well. It would have been even better if we had had any sort of composure in the final third. Because the whole plan was not to park the bus and get the draw, yeah, it was not to well, win, right? it was it, it was not to lose at the bare minimum. But when we get our openings, because we created openings to nick it, like we were definitely like trying to do that. People said we didn't want to, we weren't trying to win. I was like, obviously we were trying to win, like be serious. And I just feel like it just, it was just like the best example of like, we need new players up front because it's not that these players are not good, but it's something about like. Someone when, that just breathes goals. Yeah. They're just, there's they, like, there, if there was ever an advertisement for why Arsenal need a striker, 
it was then because you just kind of need somebody that's going to nick it for you. And nobody really had the composure. And it was not just Jesus. Right. It was Trossard. It was everyone. So, it was yeah. Every, it was everyone. And you said it there. I think people are very harsh on Gabriel Jesus. I think he played well. Obviously, he could have done better with those chances, just like with Trossard. Yeah. But I think, you know, the break, the, the biggest praise I can give Arsenal in Jesus is we're talking about Jesus. Nobody saying anything on Haaland, on Rodri or Kevin De Bruyne or oh Foden because we never saw them. And I think a couple of those players turned up against Villa yesterday. So, so nice of Arsenal for letting them out. A couple of questions before I let you get out of it because obviously we're going on your platform. Kay has said, question for Jess, who's the first choice left back for the rest of the season? Because oh, Tyrio is currently in form guy while Tommy is pound for pound is our best defender while Zinni offensively is our best left back. And then you have got Timbo when he's fit in the backdrop, I guess. Listen, we have every game is a final and we just happen to have some really difficult finals. You know, Bayern Munich, we have to play against, you know, United and Spurs and Chelsea and Villa. So I'm thinking as much as I love Zinchenko, I don't foresee a lot of times where I'm going to be like desperate to start him just because it's going to be like to say. high stakes and a lot of more defending and stuff like that. I would say it's definitely between Tomiyasu and Kivior. And um, I think it's Kivior's until until further notice. Like, I just don't see any reason to switch it up. I think the one thing I will say is that in our most difficult game that we've played, Kivior did look on the edges of fucking it up. Yeah, he did. Like, just at the on the edges at the Etihad, he was just, like, right there. Um, and then he, and, like, Arteta took him off at the perfect time. So... If it ends up being Kivior and Tommy share it, I think that's what it'll end up being. But, I mean, when we play against Brighton, I expect Kivior to start. What do you think? I mean, Kirill's giving me, a, at the end of the day, as I said, I know we run a lot of bands, but Kirill is showing me a lot of confidence. You've got the confidence, and I've always said it's about belief. You look like, regardless of these star players and whatnot, you now believe that I'm here for a reason, and you're doing well. So, for me, I've got all the confidence with him against Brighton. If I remove form and everything, and like you said, cup final... My natural bias is going to be towards Tommy Asu because I just mm -hmm. think you give us enough there. Zinchenko, it depends on the game state, as Arteta says. And I'm more looking at you to kind of be a guy that comes off the bench, you know, with che maybe Chelsea with how they are at home. But with North, with going to the North London derby, who he did well there last year. But with Chelsea, Spurs, what, the Champions League ties, you know, even Uno Emre's Aston Villa. Zinchenko doesn't give me confidence defensively, really. Yes, you run into midfield and you do well, but... It's between Kirios now. When Tommy Asu's back fit, and if he takes his chance, great. But it's Kirios to lose. Last couple yeah, of questions. Um, big up everyone who asks these in the in the what do you call this again? Can't Comment? remember the com community tab. Uh, is Odegaard a better captain than Cess? For me, that's a no. I don't know where you're at. What are we doing? Why are we doing this? These are your. These are what they you told me to ask you, though. Man. Listen, I know, like Cess. You know, it's just. Let's just let Odegaard cook a little bit longer. Sesk, I feel like his people, some people don't remember Sesk. It's like, well, you don't remember players that well, you forget. Yep. Sesk was on a different fucking planet, y'all. Different he just was. level, man. Um, yeah, but th I think they both are captaining Arsenal in times of where, you know, there's some uncertainty and trying to rebuild and, and things like that in different ways, but kind of similarly. But Sesk, to me, He's really high on my list. Like, so, sorry, Odie. <laughs> you need I mean, more Odegaard, keep, <laughs> keep doing your thing. Keep doing your thing, Odegaard. But, yeah, right now, I don't think there's anything. Someone said, injury-free Smith Rowe for 10 years, but have to sell Odegaard for 50 million this transfer window. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not selling Odegaard, so. I'm not it, selling the Odegaard. Game, the game, Smith Rowe, man. Because <laughs> people say everybody has a price. In, in theory, they do. But. To me, there's no price for Odegaard. I just, I wouldn't sell him. I just wouldn't. His legs would have to be falling off. And even still, I'd probably just sit him on the bench and give him a little El Nenny contract. Like, <laughs> I mean, you got 800 so million. That will get me I having love conversations. So much. <laughs> I love him so much. Odegaard's a baller, man. Last question. Yeah. Uh, what is the main reason for Arsenal's defensive performance compared to earlier in the season where we shipped goals against Fulham, Spurs, West Ham earlier? For me, I just think in them games, we just didn't apply that level of focus. I think in the last two years, in, in fact, even going back to the year we missed out with Spurs in top four, we have improved defensively. I just think those performances that Jay's alluded to, it's just been naiveties. And I look back to the Spurs game, Declan Rice came off. It was an open game. Jorginho was always going to be in trouble in that regards. But what do you make of that? I would say 
well, like Fulham and like those ones, that was Gabrielle wasn't on the pitch. Like I don't I don't know if people Jeez. remember first three games of the season, Gabrielle didn't play. So that was part of it. And I'm sorry, but like there's something about I guess it's because Saliba and Gabrielle can actually communicate with each other because they speak French all the time. But then like you put Saliba and Ben together and all of a sudden they don't it's like what's going on. Did you so mention Fulham? Um Fulham. Fulham so got hooked at half time, isn't it? <laughs> Whatever. And I so yeah, um I, like honestly, I just feel like it took until Dubai to like really get going, going the way that we needed to maybe a little bit of a rest, maybe a little bit of kick up the ass. Like, I'm so sorry, but like they just needed somebody sat them down. It was like, do you want to win something or not? You know? So it was a little bit of the, the pieces, the jigsaws around everybody changing, you know, having Declan and different people point. around you changes. Um, and just people just weren't on it. We just were not on it. I don't know if it was like we were still reeling from last season or whatever. It just the vibes weren't there. So now we're amazing. And basically the difference is like 2%. That's really what it is. Like in these, the top level, 2%, like you're, e you know, you're either winning the league or you're not, you know? So I really wish like the Fulham and West Ham game did not happen. I just, I'm Amen. thinking like, fuck, like those are the games that we're going to look back on and we're like, Hmm, probably could have done better that like even drawing both of those games. Yep. You yep. know, but can't go back. So we're gonna like, like you said, we can't go back. And that's only the harsh thing in that our how, as great as we've been these last two years, it might not be enough. And I know you can't win them all, but I personally will look back to the two games against Fulham. Definitely for me, Spurs and Chelsea, because Chelsea weren't at it. Spurs, we had to come from behind. West Ham at home would stick out. I guess to a certain degree, Aston Villa and Newcastle, because it goes back to what you said about the City point. And as much as the goals are spread around, at times we just need someone that has that composure, yep. confidence and experience to just put the ball in the back of the net. But you can't have it all on a good trajectory. But yeah, Jess, we're heading over to your platform. I'm conscious of time. I appreciate you for giving up your time and obviously paying your respects to Smith Rowe. Let us know where we can find you, even though I can't imagine people don't know. Yeah, guys, uh, just head over to Shino's Arsenal, like literally right now. We're going to go live again, but just put it in the search bar and you'll see me pop up. We're going to talk about Isak, I think, about a little bit more. And it's the squad deeper than it was last season, really. So we're going to talk about those things. So join us. There. Join us, people. And in fact, you know, I can do one better than what Jess said. You actually don't need to type anything on YouTube. Just click on the title of this video and it will take you to her landing page. But yeah, we're going to lock this off and we're going to go again, people. So yeah, you know, let us know your thoughts, comment, like, subscribe to the platforms. It's been a pleasure, everyone. For now, peace.